This is Polly. She is six years old and about to start grade one at her neighborhood elementary school. From a very young age, Polly has been interested in science. She can more likely be found watching the Discovery Channel than playing video games, and has asked for her very own chemistry set for Christmas. When she grows up, Polly dreams of being a doctor, just like her dad. Because Polly is a girl, it is a sad reality that her journey into the sciences is going to be a tough one. Girls who pursue medicine are faced with major obstacles along the way. Even if Polly makes it through medical school, there's a very high probability that she will not remain in the profession. Statistics from both the United States and Canada show that, while performance in the sciences is relatively equal in elementary school, girls lose ground more quickly than boys do in terms of self-efficacy, as well as raw performance. Despite this, women are beginning to overtake men in some post-secondary performance metrics. Girls graduate from university more frequently, and 57.1% of medical degrees are awarded to women. Given these statistics, why is it that only 36.4% of practicing physicians are women? Three contributing factors are stereotype threat, self-handicapping, and low expectations. Stereotype threat refers to the fear held by individuals that they will conform to negative stereotypes. Girls are particularly susceptible to stereotype threat in the sciences due to the commonly held belief that girls have less natural ability to perform well in scientific disciplines. Stereotypes about girls and science lead to the perception that scientific disciplines are inherently unfeminine and therefore unsuitable for girls to participate in, and when people are aware of the negative stereotypes surrounding them, they tend to perform worse. One of the results of this cultural stereotype is the development of social pressure for girls to meet its expectations. It follows then that many girls respond to this social pressure by putting less effort into their studies. After all, if failure is a foregone conclusion, deciding to fail becomes the only agency a girl has. In 1980, Benbow and Stanley published a study whose main finding was that boys outperformed girls on the quantitative portion of the SAT. This study helped further the cultural perception that girls can't do science. Despite much research to refute their claims, the influence of this study is still being felt today. Because of the socialized belief that they lack ability, parents and teachers tend to lower their expectations of girls' science performance. However, empirical studies have shown that teachers who expect that their students will do well tend to have higher achieving students overall. Feminist teaching strategies can help to reverse this trend by making students aware of the fact that a patriarchal society will produce a patriarchal science. Science is both a subjective construct and an objective discipline. By focusing on science's objectivity, we limit students' ability to critically engage with the discipline. There is no empirical consensus that suggests that gender has any bearing on student achievement, in science or otherwise. Hopefully, Polly's teachers keep these things in mind as they guide her on her educational journey.